sunning myself here on a nice December afternoon just waiting for the big rush for Christmas and looks like somebody pulled up and messed up my afternoon nap didn't even spill my beer when I was sleeping hey hey is that you Cody it is what's up Santa well look it's Uncle Santa and there's my nephew Cody yeah hey uh, I was just here taking a little nap and I need to ride back up to the sleigh uh, I see you're in your Jeep here. Why don't you take me for a ride? Yeah, let's go. You know, I haven't ridden in, in this Jeep in 10 years. It's been a while. You got a drink holder in this this bad boy? I do, right there. Oh, Open slot. Nice. Let me see if Santa can get in this thing, you know. He's a little, a little bigger these years. A little I had, tricky. I had Mrs. Claus sew up my pants because it was starting to get a little inappropriate. Yeah, not but for younger viewers. They, now they're a little tight. It yeah. was actually kind of nice with the extra room in there, you know, when they were blown out. Hey, they don't make pants the same way they used to they anymore. They don't, they don't. Well, I'll tell you what, I think I need you to take me back to the sleigh, but this looks like a perfect section to go yeah. wheeling. Well, let's go what for a little joyride. So, do you even know the history of this Jeep? A little bit, but refresh my memory on it. So, this Jeep was originally picked up uh, by my roommate in college, Tom. His dad bought it for him so that they could spend time together. So this is the perfect story, you know, for the Christmas season, right? Right. Family wants to spend time together. Here I see my nephew down by the river doing who knows what. Right. So Tom's dad bought it for him. They used it for a year or two and they took it on the Jeepers Jamboree. And then guess who bought it next? Ooh, let's take a guess. Your bumpa, okay. my dad, bought this for your dad so they could have a project together. And it just so happens that's right when WFO started. So your dad and I were working in, at WFO. This was one of the first Jeeps we had there to build kind of as a family rig. And now you are the third generation in our family with this Jeep. Oh, wow. And you're gonna get hung up right here? Oh no, right through. Oh yeah. So it's awesome to see to still see this thing, you know, on the road and you driving around. I know you swing it by the shop all the time. Yep. And uh, you take it up the Rubicon and you wheel it. And uh, I don't think that people know about this Jeep or have seen you know, everything about this Jeep um, yeah. since your dad built it. Uh, so I think we need to pull this thing down there by the river and uh, show them around this thing. Well, let's get out and uh, we'll talk about this Jeep, Cody. Oh, man, kept those pants together. This was the first all the way through WFO project. And it took two or three years, actually probably five to 10 years. Right to get where it is right now. And your dad took it wheeling a ton of times on the Rubicon, on the Jeepers Jamboree. I mean, it's been on the trail every year for the last 20 years. Yep. Um, fast forward, you turn 12, you're driving it. Yep. 13, when's the first time you drove it through the Rubicon? First time I wheeled it in the Rubicon, I think I was eight years old. Eight years old. Eight yeah. years old, yep. And what? how old were you the time you drove it all the way through? Oh, from start to finish, the first time I drove it all the way through, I was 14 years old. 14 years old. So, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys towed this thing up to the Rubicon behind the other Jeep, and then you drove it yep. through, right? Yep. So, you know, you couldn't drive it up there on the highway, you didn't no. have a driver's license, nope. you drove it up there, drove it all the way through. So, there's definitely a lot of history in this Jeep, and there's a lot of good family time in this Jeep. Um, and so, you're basically third generation yeah. driving this Jeep. Uh, I can't believe that we're looking at WFO built vehicles from 20 years ago that have three generations on them. Um, and that's kind of why I wanted to do this video on this Jeep. It's kind of crazy that you saw me sunning myself having my I afternoon, know. you know, Coors Light. So yeah. um, let's talk a little bit about the Jeep. Yeah, let's take a look. So first off, uh, what year is this thing? This thing is a 1971 CJ slash DJ5. It's a uh, CJ it's a conglomeration it's of a, a it's bunch a of CJ parts, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's a yep. CJ5 tub that's been extended. It's a CJ5 front cap, but it's on a Jeep DJ frame. 
And so that also helped to extend the wheelbase. So let me just interrupt here. So the good news is, is that you may be third generation. You could be considered a millennial, uh, you know, um, but you, you already know about your vehicle and what's right. going on. You've done a ton of work on this thing I yourself. Have. Right? Yeah. Okay. So I know a little bit about it too, because we sure. started in this shop. So this thing, take a look underneath here. Uh, well, before we, before I go that, yes, CJ5. It has the long front clip, the long hood, yep. which would be 76 to 86, and then uh, custom fenders that your father built by himself in the shop, all steel from scratch. They are awesome. Um, and we also, this was the first spring over we did in the shop, your dad and I. And uh, this thing has uh, BDS Wrangler springs, right? BDS Wrangler flame. Front, front yep. and rear. And this is where it gets a little dicey, okay? Because this Jeep actually has my axles in it. It does. Uh, so this thing has a high pinion 44 front end out of a 76 F100. But take a look here at the front end. So high pinion 44, but it's passenger drop. So the front end has been retubed to passenger drop, spring over. It's got, what's it got in there, Cody? Oh, I think it's got, what has it got? Four. You don't think you know. It's got 456 gears. 456s, gear. yep. And then what for a locker? It's got chromolies, it's got ARB air lockers front and rear. And if you take a look, it's got the armless WFO Dana 44 knuckles from way back in the day. It's got our high steer arms, it's got inverted T high steer on it with the big uh, one and a half ton ends. Um, it's got the Ford F-150 wheel hubs on the Chevy small bearing yep. spindles, uh, 71 to 76 Chevy small bearing spindles, Chevy brakes. Um, do you remember how wide the wheel mount is? I don't remember. Um, I think it's around 60 inches. I think it is. Yeah. I think it's right at 60 inches 59 wide. 59 or 60. And what size tire are you running? I'm so. running a 37 inch BFG KM3s. Those are actually new from this year. I had to finally retire the crawlers that were 17 years old. And race line bead locks? Yep, race li line bead locks. And it had 37 inch BFG crawlers, which sat a true 37, which looked a little cooler. It but did. They were worn out from yes, they 13 were. years old. Yep. Um, let's walk down the side here. So I love the fact that you got the window down. You yeah. picked me up wheeling with the window down, right? Um, tell us about the roll cage, Cody. Ooh, the roll cage. I believe, I don't remember who built the roll cage So your exactly. father built he this did. roll cage. It's inch and three quarter, DOM. DOM, yep. Um, it's tied into the frame. So here's the key on this roll cage. What's it have? It has our signature it, series it does. overhead console. One right? of the original ones. Dome light, stereo, CB radio. CB radio that does work. With a dome I light do and a speaker. It. Yep. And what's underneath in this big section in oh, the back yeah. here? So that big section in the back, that holds my amps. So you come in from the top, take the bikini top off, another one of our custom bikini tops here, and there's two amplifiers all the way up in the roll cage. So. CJ5, not a lot of space, right? No, not at all. Um, and then what else we got here, Cody? These are the OG WFO speaker cans. These are uh, six by nine. So here. six by nine speaker cans. We uh, we didn't put those into production because that was a lot of work. You took yeah. a regular one, sliced it in half, added plating, ground it, weld it. Um, that was a lot of work. Yeah. And then obviously this right here. So CJ5 notch the body out so that the seats could be moved way Doesn't back. Doesn't rub either. Doesn't rub the tires so the big boys can fit in there. And then what do you got back here, Cody? I noticed. Oh yeah, let me go over that. to the other side real Boom. quick. Boom. Look at that drink holder. For the back for seat. For the back seat. I noticed you had three drink holders in the front seat right there. I do. Yep. Yep, enough um, to fit all your drinks. And then this is where you keep all the ladies when you're driving them around, right? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, and you'd blast the music right in their oh, face. Oh yeah, right in your ears. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Um, what's what did you uh, notice earlier about the back of this Jeep that you noticed in one of the other videos? Yeah, I have a, a full wraparound so diamond full plate. Wrap. There's no tailgate. There's back no there. tailgate on this yep. Jeep. And I remember when we custom had this. Uh, rolled way back in the day and Bo took after Tim's style. He did. And uh, sunk in the fuel filter in there. Yep. Uh, wrapped it all the way around. And then the spare tire does swing down, right? The spare tire does swing down and actually has a table on it. So when you're cooking on the Rubicon, you have a full table behind the spare tire. And as the sink swings down, the tire bumps right on the hitch right when it's flat, yep. right? And there's a table there. Just one little bolt unscrews it from, uh, from two, there. Two, one on two each bolts. side, yep. Yep. Uh, just a simple, uh, 
um, plated off back bumper. But what about that fuel tank? How many gallons yeah. does that fit? So that is a 25 gallon fuel tank and it has two factory uh, fuel pumps in it so that if one of yours dies, you just got to plug and play into the second one. So that was a smart idea that your dad did is put two fuel pumps. All you got to do is flip it over if one right. dies. Yep. And they're factory GM fuel factory pumps. Factory GM fuel pumps. Yep. Uh, and what kind of rear ends back there, Cody? Yeah, this has got a Dana 60 with a full float with and another ARB locker in the rear. You don't know the story on this either. I do not so know this. So this also was an axle that I was going to use on the flat fender, but we decided to put it on your dad's Jeep when we were building it because this is the Jeep we were building at the time. So this is a high pinion front Dana 60 that has been retubed on one side to be a centered high pinion Dana 60, has the Chevy caliper mounts on there. And if you look, there's a flange that welds onto the axle housing there. And basically that takes a front Dana 60 spindle onto that flange. And that's how we make the full floater double splined uh, rear setup. Yeah. And this cap right here is basically just a drive flange for the full floater. Remember, you used to have locking hubs. I used on to it, have right? locking hubs back in the flat towing days. When they we, leaked your too dad much. would flat tow yep. you up to the Rubicon, um, which yep. worked fine, but we decided that was a bad idea because of why? Huh. Leaking oil. You're leaking oil all over my wheels. The rims then, are always full of oil. Yep. So we've since learned no locking hubs in the rear. We're done with that situation. Yep. Why don't you uh, show the underneath on the belly pan there, Cody, and, and show off the uh, what you got going underneath. Yeah. So. That's a custom made skid plate right there. Hiding underneath it is a Dana 300 with four to one. It's got uh, advanced adapters, um, high output shafts on it. And then hiding up in front of that, we have an SM465 four speed Chevy transmission. And I heard a story about this transmission earlier. You're gonna have to uh Well, when we go it. up on the inside, I'll show the guys, but uh, this 465 has the quick throw shifter, Cody. Okay. Uh, I noticed you got something else back here. What's this thing? Oh yeah, those are my track bars right there. Oh, come on, we call that a torque arm. Or a torque arm, excuse so me. So that's yeah. the uh, one of the OG original WFO torque arms. And uh, you can see how high the drive line is tucked up out of the way when you got a high pinion in the rear. And you know, your dad basically had to do a high pinion back here because there's no length for the drive line on a CJ5, right? right? And check out the gas tank, how it's right up above the differential. There's hardly any room between the diff and the gas tank, but they don't hit. That bump stop hits and diff doesn't hit the gas tank. Nope, never hit it. I see you got rock lights underneath here. Actually, LEDs, 20-year-old yes, Those are 20-year-old LED rock lights. That right is there. awesome. Yep. They still are fully functional. Long travel front drive line, 1310. So I think as I'm looking in here inside, Cody, you know, the ergonomics of this Jeep for being a CJ5, for not having a ton of room, I mean, a big guy like me can fit in here comfortably. You're tall, you can fit in yep. here comfortably. What, uh, you got 10 inch Tuffy console, yep, right? 10 inch Tuffy console with my ARB lockers plumbed into the front right there. So I have the, a gauge. So when you're sitting in the seat, you just reach and click. You don't yep. have to lean forward. Yep. And then here's your, your, this is one thing we did that's pretty amazing. I'll put your Dr. Pepper yeah. over here. So I remember your dad built that. You know why? So you could fit the big gulp. Yeah. You know, you, you, you know need a drink cool. holder for all the big ones. It fits my 40s. Yetis. Yeah. Yeah. What else does it fit? It fits my Yetis. So yeah, it fits my Yeti see, drinks. Who knew it was going to work in the new age? It you does. Know? Yeah. So let's talk about the dash. Yeah. So the dash is pretty cool. It flips down. So there's those three so screws So you remove the these three screws. The screws. whole thing flips down. It's on a hinge, right? Yep. It's on a hinge. So yep. it's easy to plug and play All wire. All the wiring harnesses behind yep. there. Fuse panel, fuses, everything. Everything. Um, something that is uh, neat and very cool on this rig is this covering, right? Right. So. It's when we uh when we were building this jeep we were uh, partnered up with a guy who built um enclosures for gillig, gillig school buses yes and so he went ahead and built this for for us and uh what's the cool thing about that cody so the cool thing about this is that when you turn on the headlights it's a little too bright to see all of the lettering lights up including the WFO logo so in the center. So there's fiber optics behind this laser etched plastic. Yep, 20 year old fiber turn, optics. 20 year old fiber optics, when you turn that on, it lights up the WFO emblem and that, right? Yep. Um, and how many miles are on this thing, Cody? Oh, we, this will tell the history of this Jeep. Yeah, this thing has uh, 19,734 miles so on it. So about to turn 20,000 miles. Yep. Um, and, you know, third generation here. So 
And you're just about to put a motor in this thing. I right? am. Yeah, let's pop the hood and let's take a look. Let's pop the hood and take a look. Fold up the window here. Huh. That's the one thing you got to put the window up if you're going to look under the hood. Even the paint job's still good on this thing. Oh, until we bump that. Yeah, until we scratch it right there. Yep. So, your father, very meticulous. Yep. He put everything in a great spot on this. And first off, what kind of engine is that, Cody? So this is a 4.3 Vortec V6 out of a 1992 Buick Bravada. Oldsmobile Bravada. Or Oldsmobile. You got yes. an Oldsmobile engine in this. I thing. do. Yeah, and you take a look at it. It looks like a mini tune port engine, you know, out of, a, you know, out of like a cop car. Yeah. But it's only a V6, 4.3. Yep. Um, I remember when your father got the car, tore it apart at the shop, ripped the engine out. I mean, oil, total mess, right? Um, and then you're about to put a new motor in this thing, and what did you do? I am. So this thing... Where did you find a motor? Okay, so I found a motor in the front yard of someone's house in a Lake of the Pines neighborhood. But the motor right was the attached to a running car. It was attached to a running car. I brought it over, did a few burnouts, and then um, it came out of a... The new motor's going to be out of a 1994 GMC Jimmy. And, and just like your father, you pulled that up onto your, your mom and dad's nice I concrete, did. right? Yep. You got a cherry picker. And you and your buddies came over. Yep, we it, pulled it out, transmission transfer case in one whole piece, cut off the front end of the car. I heard it was a complete mess over there. Cody. It was a mess. So these are the kind of stories I like to hear. You know, my nephew in his dad's driveway, dumping oil, gasoline. You guys all know what that scene looks like, and that's uh, that's what stories are made of right there. Were you in yep. trouble that day? No, actually I wasn't. It was more of a proud father-son moment, I think. That's what your dad said. I don't think your mom was No, that. I don't think so. Uh, so what kind of brakes you got on this thing? Yeah, so this has a Hydro Boost brakes. Yep. So you can see that right here. Optima Red Top. Yep, old Optima school. Red Top. That's it. That's pretty cool right there. That's my ARB compressor for the front and rear so lockers. Even though you have two air systems, your ARBs are just on the mini compressor Correct. right here. Um, and then what's this? That right there is a York AC compressor that's been converted over to air so that I can pump up my tires whenever so I need to. You got the York compressor on the 4.3. This is for you know high volume air. Right. Uh, this is the this is the RB. Now what's this little uh, gold thing right down oh, in here? What is that gold thing? That is your heat exchanger for your hot shower. It is. Cody. Yep. Hot shower so, that I've never used. And it's actually warm right now, so it's hooked up. You've never used it. So the hot shower, the heat exchanger is right there. And then if you look right here, I know this part, and you know it too. Yep. So what are those, Cody? Oh, right here we have our hot and cold waters. For the shower. Yep. And then right there is your air connect for your air hose to pump up your tires or your body's tires. York. Correct. Yep. yep. And then back up to this area, what's this thing do, Cody? That right there is pretty neat. That connects to the CV. <laughs> That's my PA system. Have you used that at all? I have used it. You hook up cop sirens to it. Any, you could yell at your buddy in front of you. It's really useful. Yeah, I'm glad to see that the uh, the millennial generation is enjoying a good old fashioned yeah. PA speaker. Yeah, that makes me smile. I'm happy about that. Uh, overflow for the radi radiator and no electric fan on this. No electric it? fan. Factory clutch fan with the shroud, right? Yep. So. What's going on up here? So, there's a lot of spare parts hidden around this Jeep. Right here, we have an axle shaft right here. So obviously here. that's the long side front axle shaft. That's the shaft. long side front axle shaft. And look at it, it's even a chrome ollie too. It is, yep. it's a spare chrome ollie shaft that I have. Yep, and then what's that in front of you? You wanna open that up? Yeah, so right here's one of my toolboxes. This is a plumb full of tools that you could use to uh, basically rebuild the whole look at Jeep. That. You even the have thing. the ball joint adjuster tool, yep. you have your wheel bearing. You know, most people just take a chisel to loosen the wheel bearing. Nope, nuts. I have the actual tool. Oh, that's amazing. And that, that reminds me, what's this right here? That's my PCC Hydro PSC. PSC. Yeah. Excuse me. Hydro assist pump for the steering. Yep, so the 44 front has hydro assist it does. on it. Um, which runs perfect. One yep. finger steering. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Um, and then right there on the on the firewall, what's that little plug for, Cody? Ooh, what is this plug for? I know what it is. That tell? is the uh, that's the throttle tuner, isn't it? No, I that is know. for the trailer for oh the for towing. flat towing. Flat yep, towing. You're right. You plug in right there. Boom. Got your brake lights for flat towing. That's the harness. Um, what kind of winch you got up here, Cody? Oh boy, I have an old school worn winch. I don't remember what it's from. So the, it came from something. So I think this actually came on the original Jeep from okay. Rick. Uh, before it went to Tom, before your dad yep. got it and Bumper got it. So this is a Warren 8274, yep. Cody. This is the godfather of winches. 
It still you, has cable on. You got it a too. metal cable, but I see you went with a, a new Scott style uh, thimble there. I did. On our uh, newer JK, we put the thimble on it, so we decided to match it with the other. So, what's this? Let me ask you this. This is something you know I'm not a big fan of in my videos, but. I like the fact it's small and hidden. That is a really away. small light bar. Small light bar, I'll go with you. And you know what, it's on the winch, so I can, if I take the, any part of the winch, the light bar comes off with it. Super simple, wired super clean with the pod lights, the rigid pod I'm lights. I'm good with that, I like yeah. it. And two by four front bumper, all box frame, all plated frame. Uh, this front hoop here going to your bumper, ties into the shock mounts, yep. um, which you know work its way all the way back. One of the things you don't understand is how much time your father spent on making these fenders. Absolutely. So even this little detail of this line right here on the fender. So what that is, is a, is a drip rail basically. Yep. So the water blows on this, it doesn't go under the hood, comes off the hood, rolls off, and it makes it rigid. Yep. And then on the inside here, take a look at those fender wells. Those are all hand rolled fender wells. Uh, custom formed and they even have a lip bent underneath them they do so they don't flop around I mean your father put so much time into this and it makes me really happy that you're putting all your time into it destroying driveways getting ready to put a new engine yep. in. and the only thing wrong with this engine is it smokes right yeah I believe it has a the rings are bad ring but valve guys ring um, valves the whole thing it's a tired yep. motor probably well, has 120,000 miles I on look it. forward to you actually pulling this engine out yourself, getting the new one put together, and getting it in. That will be a big project, yeah. and that'll prove to me that this, this young generation can do it, Cody. Yep, and so the deal is with putting the engine in is it has to look just as clean as this here. It can't be That's very much rule? different. Yeah. You, you can't take all the nice things he's done no. and screw it up, right? Nope, so it has to go back in 100% clean. It'll look almost exactly the same, just be way better. There's some pretty neat features hidden in this Jeep too is my storage capacity right here and on the other side, the passenger side, we have two gun lockers. Those These go the handy. whole length of the seat, They right? do. They're they just really slide long. out. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then in the back over here, if you don't mind pushing the button over there, okay. underneath the back seat I have a full toolbox. It's a little empty right now. Looks like power steering fluid, brake lines, air, B line, tire, you know, goo. Dude, you got a hand hacksaw? I do have a hand hacksaw. Man, you got all the good stuff, so. Yep. And then you have a roof rack for this too, right? I do have a roof rack. We bought the roof rack when we took it to uh, Easter Jeep Safari, what was it, eight years ago? And there's bungs welded into the, the roll cage and correct. it bolts right into the there roll is. cage, right? Yep. yep, it also has another rigid light bar on it, but for the, old, uh, for the old CJ look, I decided to take the roof rack off. Yeah, and then, you know, the story on the shifter is, you know, obviously OG, billet WFO shift knobs, 19 years old. The Dana 300 has the billet shift knobs on as well, but this transmission is a quick throw, and you didn't realize that, that I did 465s not. were not usually that quick. Well, the other thing, so here's the story. The top of this transmission came out of a 92 three-quarter ton Chevy pickup with a big block, which is an IFS OBS truck. Well, the OBS trucks, the way the cab was built, the shifter had to come out farther back on the transmission top on a 465. So Chevy kept the old 465 from back in the 70s and 80s and just made this aluminum top where the stick comes back about six inches further back. So there's hardly any bend in the stick here to get it in the Jeep, but it's a very quick throw shifter. So all you guys that have old school 465s and you want to freshen up your Jeep, look in the junkyard for that new body style 465 top and it's aluminum. And that's what your dad did. He dug around and found one in a wrecking yard, slapped it on here. You don't have to do anything but pull the top of the transmission off and put it on. You got a quick throw shifter. Well, let's, uh, let's go take this thing for a ride. Yeah, let's go for a spin. Yeah. So, so, so you know back in the day, uh, your dad was quite the wheeler. Oh, yeah. And you got a couple pictures at the house to prove it, right? I do have a couple pictures. And There's, the first picture with this Jeep was 04, the right? The first picture of this Jeep was 04, and it's actually a picture of you hanging out the passenger side. There, I've been known to do that. Yep. Yep, on the Jamboree. Then there's a few other ones. There's one where it has raw fenders on it, short roll cage. And you were just saying that you don't like the front hoop on this thing, right? The front hoop's a little bit much for me. I kind of want to go back to an old nostalgic CJ look. Might so trim it down you don't know how much this makes me happy that you want to take a bunch of tube off and go back to old school less is more. 
Yeah. I appreciate that. And just because you saw it like that on the 04 picture? It's the 04 picture. I've always liked the CJ grill. I'm even considering putting a halfback cage back on it. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I kind of want to put a halfback cage yeah. back on go really old school. Well, let's let's go romp on this thing a little yeah, bit. Well, before you start it, why don't you have him look at the tailpipe yeah. and, and you'll see take, why take he's thinking look. about putting a motor in it. Take a look at the tailpipe. Mosquito abatement, huh, Cody? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's Sometimes go. it keeps the women away. That's not very good. <laughs> ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Oh, it looks like we got ourselves a little bit of a river crossing here. Hard left, hard left! Giddy up! Whoa! Over there, over there, over there, over there! Hold on, stop! Hey, Santa, check and see if the rear tires are spinning. Let me see. need to hit four wheel drive here uh we are buried <laughs> you 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 might have to go back forward i don't know we got it work it yeah oh boy oh boy not the pond not the pond not the pond now back up oh boy oh, oh man i just got this suit cleaned and look at that you you know what I think the best thing to do is, Cody? What's the best idea? If we just go to the car wash, we can kill, you know... A few birds with one stone? Yeah, as they say. Yeah, let's All right. go over to the car wash. After the car wash it is. Jingle bells. All right, time for a car wash. Get this suit cleaned up nice for Christmas. All righty. Car Santa. Oh, there we go. How am I going to get in this thing? <laughs> One thing that uh, we forgot to tell you, I don't know if you noticed, Cody was trying to do a burnout in the car wash. What did you realize, Cody? Uh, I realized that I didn't understand how my line locks were so labeled. So he has a front line lock and a rear line lock, and they're labeled front burn and rear burn. But the deal is front burn means you lock the rear end, Rear burn means you lock the front end. Yep, I had it back. So we almost threw the drive line in the car wash. So as your uncle and as uh, your mentor, I think that we need to try this again. I do. But I'm thinking we do the world's slowest burnout. What do you think? Challenge accepted. Well, hold on, let's get your lights on. Rock lights. Rock lights. Oh, front sweet. lights, back lights. All right, well, let's see if we can do, the, see world's if we can do the world's slowest burnout. burnout. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's get out. We might as well get out. What do they call this? Ghost riding Dude, the whip? Dude, we're ghost riding the whip. What's E40 do? That would be the world's slowest burnout by, by my nephew, Cody. Um, it's really not too impressive, you know? Oh, where's my beer? It's like you could just hang out here, drink a beer, you know, go into the bar have a drink, come back out, just let it burn out in the intersection. Second gear! Second gear! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, shit! Whoa! Oh, shit! Jesus Christ! Okay, it doesn't jump gear. God tried to kill your uncle. Let's see it.
episode of 12 Rigs of Christmas. And uh, go ahead and try this one at home, kids. It's fun. Oh, yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh no, it took it to the rocks. I went through the first layer of pavement. <laughs> God damn. Look at it. <laughs> I really hope. Did you see my beard get caught? Cake.